hi it's Gadget UK here again a um, bit vlogish this is the uh, battery charger I use to keep the, the, the battery in my car uh, charged because I don't drive very often you know once a month typically my battery tends to go down so uh, yeah at least once a month I'll charge it up with this um, so you can see I've removed the first two screws all that's happening is I think the uh, that standby light is coming on there and then it won't come on so I'm guessing it's capacitors I mean I've had this for several years now at least maybe 10 years uh, that looks like a security screw is it or is it just a bone protecting it I'm not sure uh, I'll investigate that further yeah it was just a little uh, plastic bung I just got the uh, tool in there and just levered that out and that's uh, showing the remaining uh, fourth screw there I uh, hope this is uh, sort of serviceable. There might be lots of, uh, uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, conformal coating. There is. Can you see it's got a glossy look to it? So uh, yeah, I see straight away uh, a couple of caps, and there's one here, uh, one here, and then uh, a couple over here. So uh, yeah, I just need to uh, have a look at it really, and just uh, see if I can work out which one might be the offending cap. So I don't think they want you to service these. In order to get the uh, grommet out here, you twist it, but I've had to split it here. Can you see, I've cut a little piece of plastic out. Um, I could always stick that back in. It's, as you can see here, it's just a little bit. But that means I can then lift the board up and uh, get to the underside of it. So all the solder points look okay on there. I don't really see uh, you know, what could be the issue. Um, there is a fuse that's sort of soldered on down here. Can you, you can just about see? In between those two pots there I think so uh, yeah I could check that just to make sure that's okay uh, I've got no reason to believe that that's the cause because this it, it's done this before and it was intermittent last time I plugged it in and left it for a bit then it was alright um, it could also be the uh, switch here maybe the mode switch is not working so I'll check that um, but beyond that I think I'm gonna start by removing that small cap there and check that it's right in between the transformer and the heatsink um, there are obviously you know caps on both sides here you know there's a small one down here on the output can you see that uh, just under that red cable there so it could be uh, I don't know it could be anything really I'm just taking a guess with capacitors here well I'm thinking it's just that tactile switch actually um, if I measure this way across these contacts you can see we've got a short and it's the same here we've got a short so that means these contacts here when you press it down you should get a short and you're not doing let's just uh, make sure I'm on the contacts properly yeah I'm seeing a, a, a tiny bit of resistance so uh, it looks like that tactile switch is the problem um, I'm going to just get a bit of deoxit into it and press it a few times and see if that'll sort it so I'm literally just going to drip it in there uh, like that actually uh, we can clean the, you know, the excess off in a minute with a cotton bud, but uh, I want it to try and get right inside it if I can. I hope this is all it is. Um, I need to charge my car tomorrow because it's got its MOT. And I think my brakes are knackered if I'm honest. So let's try that again. I think that switch is gone completely. So as you can see, the other thing I'm doing here is just adding a bit of fresh solder and just reflowing these. It'll help with the conformal coating that might just be uh, on the surface of the uh, thing a little bit, you know, on the legs to make it easier to measure. But also the heat, as soon as it travels into the switch, uh, combined with the fact it's got some deoxid in there, could just sort it. any better. It's just not registering at all. Yeah, it's definitely the switch. I'm going to have to swap it out, I think. I'm surprised at that. I am really surprised at that. Surprised the deoxid did not fix it. So uh, yeah, apologies. I'm rushing through this pretty fast. I've used the uh, tool here to get under it. Heat each side, 
here and just lever a little bit just to get it to, uh, you know, to sit above the pads and then I can use the desolder braid again here to try and uh, suck up the solder and then if we do the same thing on the other side hopefully it should come off and hopefully we shouldn't lose any uh, pads here and I can get a new switch on that's one side off we've kind of moved the pad there despite the fact I've got the iron set super low this is the problem if you try and lever things like this there we go I think we lost a pad there look that was just barely hanging on hopefully it doesn't go anywhere it looks like it doesn't from what I can see so uh, yeah I'm having one of those days today it's just like everything is going wrong today um, I kid you not, I bang my head, I split my head, I've got a cut that long on the top of my head, blood was pouring down my face, I whacked it on the boot of my car, uh, it's just, oh, I don't know, it's just in a bad way. Anyway, um, so what I've done is I've smoothed it down, can you see, it's the same height as that one, I used the iron tip there, so yeah, it's a bit irregular on the edges, you know, you could just chip that off, it just comes off dead easy. Um, but we need a little hole, can you see this one's got a hole for the cap? So uh, I'm just going to use my little uh, drill bits here and uh, drill a hole of the same size. What I'll do is fit the drill into there to make sure it's the same size and then just drill very carefully in the sensor. So I'm going to put my replacement switch on. The other one had a little notch um, for the little uh, switch thing that goes on top. Uh, I've just cut it off. What I'm going to do is, you can you see, it sits into that recess there. So, as long as I get it fairly central, it'll be okay. I think what I'm going to do with this switch here is just put a piece of captain tape over there to hold that on the inside. So, in theory, it should still work. You know, you should still be able to push this um, and it should be okay. So if we uh, get the uh, new switch on here now, um, I just need to just flatten the legs a little bit. Yeah, we did lose one pad down here, but it was just uh, an anchor point. All the other pads are okay. So uh, we'll start with this corner here. I'll just add a little bit of uh, solder to that point. And uh, I'm going to try and hold this whilst I do it, if I can, I think. Yeah, that's the first one. Let's just straighten that a little bit. A little bit on here. And then just this one over here. I'll try not to melt the plastic here. Yeah, so when it's not quite as straightly aligned as it could be. But there we go, should be okay. Yeah, I've tested the switch by the way, uh, and it's, uh, it does work. So, I think we're pretty much done now. We just need to, we'll test it while it's in circuit here. So previously, if you uh, measured between these contacts here and pressed the switch, it wasn't uh, registering, hang on. Yeah, you see that? So, uh, yeah, the way it works is these two contacts are short all the time, these two contacts are short all the time. When you press it, these two join and these two join. So, before I put it back together, can you see the uh, button there? There's a little uh, round piece of plastic, you know, and it had a little uh, notch that stuck onto the centre of the original switch. And that, centers, uh, that switch has not got a hole in the centre. So, I've just stuck it in there, put a bit of captain tape just to hold it. But the main thing is we compress it. The captain tape is going to stop it from flowing around inside, especially when the PCB goes back in. I'll show you. Uh, as soon as the PCB's up against the thing here, it's working. Fantastic. So, let's uh, now get the uh, cable back through here, like this. Twist that that way. We've got a little hole here. You could always put a bit of uh, glue or something in there to secure that. So, let's uh, now get the screws back in. And we'll stick that little uh, bung back in uh, over there. There we go. And uh, let's plug it in and test it. So plugged in, we've got the standby light, and yes, it works now. It's going through the modes. That wasn't happening before, so that's all it was, that button. Well, 
so in the interests of uh, uh, curiosity, I guess, and uh, science, I thought, let's uh, take this to pieces and see uh, what's wrong with it. Because it's really weird, you know, normally with these, these sort of switches, contact cleaner will get it working. You'd expect some sort of resistance. You know what? I'm not seeing anything on this. If I uh, hold the uh, meter, uh, seeing nothing. There's just nothing. Nothing at all, which is... Uh, is really bizarre because it is clicking it's making a clicking noise so these things can you see the little uh, plastic notches there it's kind of like uh, little <laughs> tubes of plastic that go through the metal and then they melt them so uh, you know you can sort of cut them off can you see that just get some cutters on there and sort of like try and slice an angle I'm not too worried about damaging this I'm just curious to see what the two contacts look like on the inside here so if we just uh, break them off, yeah, that's that one. Just the uh, just the final one to do here now. That's that one. So hopefully now, if we're careful, the metal plate should come off the top. There we go. That's just a cover. Then we got the uh, plastic uh, plunger here. Yeah, so you can see the contacts here. So this is like a, a, a domed piece of metal. Um, you know, it's concaved, so when you press it down, when you click it in the middle here, yeah, you can just about see that. You won't be able to hear it clicking, I don't think. Oh yeah, you can. It clicks down. But, as I say, it's really mysterious this, because um, despite the fact it's clicking, there is no connection. The other thing is, you know, we had to cut that little uh, piece of the, uh, let's just cut the plastic away here. We had to cut that little piece of plastic out to get the cable uh, out there. So the unit is sealed. You know, there's no way for anything to get in it. It's kind of, it was kind of like an airtight sealed lid. You can see it moving there, look. Let's see if we can get that up. There we go. So, yeah, I'll put you on macro so you can have uh, a closer look. So, there we go. So, I think you can probably see, see all these little marks on here. I think it's kind of like got some sort of corrosion or something started inside that. Hopefully you can see that. It's, uh, I forget the light off it. Can you see? It's like something crystallised, maybe some greeny bits there. It's hard to see. You'll be able to see it better than I can. Um, and then the uh, switch itself. So I think it makes a join between the center point there and here. Um, because it's the orientation, you know, the connection is this way. So, uh, yeah, it must be something molded into the base. I mean, maybe that could have broken where the center point joins to, uh, you know, one side or the other. I don't know. The very nature of this bit here being concaved and going that way up these two bits are always going to be joined generally and we know we had a you know a short that way and a short that way um so yeah i'm guessing that's what it is i'm gonna try cleaning that up now sticking that back in and just to see if that makes a difference so we'll give that a little clean with the uh, fiberglass brush just in the center because that's the point where it's going to make the contact uh, and I think it's probably plated with something that so you know we're going to wear the plating off just by virtue of cleaning that anyway that's looking clean and um, we'll do the same thing in here just with the fiberglass uh, pen it's quite hard because there's not a lot of clearance in there yeah so if, like if you didn't cut those bits off there you could reassemble one of these but it's not worth the effort they're only pennies so let's test it again one on that one one on that one yeah can you hear that so some corrosion had got underneath that little dome which is uh, really weird because like i say the whole thing's sealed so very odd <laughs> 